we're all capable of genocide. Let's actually make that, put that at the forefront of our minds so like we never do it. We're all capable of being abusive. Some of the studies on the Holocaust, you had great philosophers, Thomas Hobbes, saying our nature by instinct is brutal. We are just a really rough species. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Starts on the Channel. On today's video, we are going to talk, be talking about how us as individuals need to be able to see darkness in ourselves, to recognize that we're capable of doing terrible things and that other people are the same as us. We are the same as other people. So much gets in the way of us acknowledging that we are monsters or that we can be monsters. And this is so important psychologically speaking because it's too easy to blame everyone else for our problems or just say, if those people over there weren't so evil, then I'd be okay. And if we can learn that we also have the capacity for evil inside of us, that helps us bring up this idea of our common humanity and that helps us understand ourselves and each other much better. Okay, great. I haven't seen this now. clip, so yeah. I'm interested. To okay, see let's see. Here we go. So that's the ideologies and the leaders. What about the individual people, the millions of people that play a part in all of this? That um, are the hosts of the stories, that are the, the the catalyst and the sort of the the components of how the story spreads. Mm -hmm. uh, would you say that all of us are capable of spreading any story? Sort of the the Solzhenitsyn idea of the, um, that all of us are capable of good and evil. The the line yeah. between good and evil runs the heart of every man. Yes. I wouldn't say that every person is capable of every type of evil, but we are all fallible. Um, there is a large element. It, it partly depends on the efforts we make to develop our self-awareness during life. Uh, part of it depends on moral luck. Yeah. You know, if you are born as a Christian German, uh, in the 1910s or 1920s and you grow up in Nazi Germany, that's bad moral luck. Your chances of committing terrible things, you have a very high chance of doing it. And y you can with withstand it, but it will, tr will take tremendous effort. If you are born in Germany after the war, you're morally lucky. The, you will not be put to, to such a test. You will not need to exert these enormous efforts not to commit atrocities. So there is a- Maybe we should pause it there for a second, sure. And what do you think about that point that he's making? So about moral luck. I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting point. Often we talk a lot about like the arbitrariness, or we think about the arbitrariness of our birth, like where we're born, right? who our parents are. Um, Harari here is making yeah, he's adding another layer, which is what's the sort of general economic, social, political environment in which we emerge and how might that impact our behavior. Um, there's a lot of, in the scholarship on sort of Nazi Germany from the 30s to the mid 40s, uh, there's the talk about how most, not all, most perpetrators of some of the worst crimes against uh, Jews, gypsies, communists, those with disabilities, everyone that the Nazis targeted, we're just sort of like ordinary men, right? There's a book, I think it's Christopher Browning. I think it's literally called Ordinary Men. Most people who served in some of the most brutal German military units, the Einsatz, the Einsatzgruppen or the SS or different killing squads were like, Mike, me and, me and you, like what would we have done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think what Harari is talking about is sort of like a, maybe not a mainstream position, but something that a lot of, I think, people who study this topic have recognized. So, um, the Ordinary Men perspective. There's also um, Hannah Arendt's been the banality of evil, her assessment of um, the Eichmann trial. So Adolf Eichmann was a major sort of architect of the Nazi Holocaust, made sure the trains ran on time. But there's the Nuremberg trams. No, or no this was in the 60s, uh, 50s or 60s. Um, Eichmann left Germany after the war, fled to Argentina, was captured by the Mossad, the Israeli intelligence services, brought back to Jerusalem and tried for war crimes. Um, and Arendt was then a leading sort of Jewish intellectual. She was German by birth, moved to uh, to the States, was a journalist for the magazine, The New Yorker, and 
and travels to Jerusalem to watch the trial and reflects on it. She writes a whole series of uh, New Yorker articles and then turns that into a book. And her main thesis in assessing Eichmann was that he was just this bureaucrat. He was, he was banal. He was, he was just like everyone else. He wasn't a special evil genius. And that was controversial at the time because we might like to see the Nazis and Hitler as, and maybe Hitler was a unique kind of person and maybe Eichmann was. But she's arguing that, no, he's, the Eichmann, at least for him, he was sort of a bureaucrat trying to advance his career like most other government bureaucrats. Um, and to Harari's point, he was just happened to be born in a certain moral environment that incentivized a certain kinds of behavior. Um, and if someone else, was in that exact same position as Eichmann, they probably would have done the exact same thing. That's at least the claim. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know enough to say I agree or disagree, but it's a powerful and very scary thing. This, 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 yeah. this is such a And last thing I'll say is that even pr prior to, you know, some of the studies on the Holocaust, you had great, you know, philosophers, Thomas Hobbes saying, our nature by instinct is brutal. We are just a really, rough species and we're constantly at war with one another, we're constantly insecure, we're violent. Harari talks about this in his book, if you remember some of the early chapters about when some of the early like sapiens. Sapiens, yeah. yeah when I, when some of the human like communities would arrive in like what was then not what what was now sorry Australia, we just demolished and burned and killed so many species. And environmental devastation it isn't like a twentieth century capitalism industrial thing. It's like a deeply human thing. That we've done for so long, we you know we sapiens pushed aside and committed genocide presumably against the anthophiles. Uh, Harari argues and a whole bunch of other sort of non-human species as well. It suggests something you know is evidence in favor of this proposition. They are it's it's deeply ingrained in us. Horrible capacity for horrible violence and oppression of others. Yeah, what do you think for that? No, yeah, that was that was a very thoughtful reflection on all these things or just information. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard a lot of that stuff put that way. I think for our purposes to bring it back to sort of these mind habits for well-being, well, we're just for having a somewhat sane life. We're trying to pull out this idea that all humans are capable of deception and horror and violence. And one of the primary pathways to that is dishonesty. And then when we collectively allow each other to be dishonest in the service of some hypothetical goal or hypothetical good. It's the idea of our, the road to hell is big with good intentions. There's increasingly mounting evidence of how that's actually false. And I think it's very difficult for the average person to come to terms with that, hmm. right? Oh, it's okay to lie here. It's okay to bend the truth here because I'll avoid some discomfort and that person won't feel sad or i don't have to feel like that is not good it's hard to say that sometimes because i don't want to believe it or put my flag in the ground but that's clearly not good and it's not okay and at the same time we're human we're not perfect we're going it's all work in progress and i think lastly around this conversation one thing that i had to or that i came to was actually to really accept the fact that yes as harari says had i been born in Nazi Germany, I 99% probably would have likely been a Nazi soldier. Okay. It's hard to accept. Or like not resisted or not protected. Sure, sure, right, 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 right. So we've so, gone along with. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, so there seems to be like two things on the table about human nature. One, we're mistake prone, so we're not perfect. We can make mistakes, there's yeah. that. Yeah. Which is sort of like the more benign, softer interpretation of what our nature is at its core. The second um, is where we have this great capacity for evil. So the first perspective of just we're infallible, we're, we're fallible, is we might be nice, but sometimes we make mistakes, and those are well-intended mistakes. But we're always trying to do our best. The second perspective is we got some real stuff some scary stuff going on in our minds. And more often than we would like, we're willing to act on those very violent, scary thoughts. So the one thing I would ask you, or I wonder about is which perspective is, from a mental health perspective, from a psychological wellness perspective, which view of human nature is better to accept? The we're well-intended, but mistake prone because we sort of just don't know, we don't have enough information, we don't have the expertise, 
we're clouded by a whole host of cog- whole, whole host of cognitive biases that get in the way of decision making, or we are very violent and we have the great we have great capacity for evil. Which one should we adopt when we're trying to be resilient and strong and you know as just live you know full emotionally well lives? Which one? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I have an answer until you just brought that back into. The, the well-being resilience thing is... Wait, sorry, an answer to... Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Well, I don't think it matters. So, yeah, so the answer would be both. Both are right. Both yeah, are right. I think okay. it's... it's yeah. At least as I understand it, we're trying to do our best to be honest with ourselves to the best of our ability in each moment and to be willing to look at our dark side. The pop mm-hmm. psychology term is shadow work these days, or that's the uh, Jungian mm-hmm. terminology. Whatever you want to call it is we must accept the fact that we have the capacity to be homicidal maniacs and to observe our fantasies, violent or or whatever, vengeful. Everyone has them. Some people more so than others, perhaps, but I think so many people are terrified of acknowledging that about themselves because then they attach all these moral judgments to it or they believe that their thoughts are them Mm. and therefore if they have these thoughts they're bad because they have these thoughts and they're bad then the dog right the the story unfolds so we have to acknowledge that and then i think to tie in the other side of this sort of more perhaps uh, lighter version of our fallibility to bring that in in a sense of rigorous honesty and Mm. compassion and kindness yes I am a psychopathic maniac, or I have the capacity for that. Mm -hmm. And oh wow, that's actually what makes me human, and Mm -hmm. that's okay. It's okay to acknowledge that about myself. It doesn't mean that that's who I am or what I will be. But under the circumstances of Nazi Germany in the 30s, chances are I would have been sucked into that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it again, it's not an excuse for bad behavior, it doesn't mean we put up with these things. We have to recognize within ourselves that it's possible. Yeah. Do you think, Mike, um, that if we this, this the second darker perspective on human nature, the like you said, the genocidal maniac is in all of us, the great capacity for evil is in all of us. Do you think that if we accept that, we're actually less likely? To, okay. The question is, to prevent us from doing horrible things, is a better strategy to deny that great capacity for evil that's in us as humans? Or is it to, to accept it? Yeah. Which one, do you think by denying it, we're more likely to be better or by accepting it, we're more likely to be more moral in our behavior towards ourselves and others, right? Yeah, I don't know. Is that a rhetorical question? I don't no, know. I, I don't often forget what that rhetorical question even means. But so, no, I think it's actually not implied, right? No, no, it's, no, it's, a, it's a, so it's, I'm trying to think of the practical, like if I walk yeah. around, when I leave, yeah. when, we, when I go, when I leave here and go home, I'm thinking, okay, how should I think about my nature? Am I better off thinking, okay, I can really do some damage. I better be aware of my capacity to do, to do damage because if I'm aware of it, I'm less likely to act on these horrible yes, impulses right, that sometimes right. pop up in all of our minds. Right. Um, yeah. If I, or if I suppress it and deny it's there, say, so no, 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 we're all gold inside, we're angels inside, we're loved, we love, we love. Might there be an unintended consequence yeah. of that? If I convince myself I'm so great, maybe I'm more actually capable of evil. There. I mean, I should yeah. say just just one one class I, I've taught, I usually the first class is I tell, you know, I tell my students, look how many horrible things have been justified by political leaders on the grounds of morality. Colonialism, different wars, genocide, they're all Hitler never said, Hey, I'm about to do some horrible things, who's with me? It's hey, I'm about to do some amazing things for the German nation and now I'm gonna save you and protect you from these, you know, the, the, these threats. He probably thought he was an amazing guy. Mm-hmm. He probably never recognized his capacity for great evil increasing his probability to do great evil. Yeah, so, so yeah, I'm sort of wondering which one we're better off. Yeah, which well, to add on to off. that, so this sort of idea that we are quote unquote good or we don't have the capacity to be homicidal maniacs, mm-hmm. where I think an important distinction is like a lot of people would say, yes, humans are capable of that, but not me. Right. Because yes. I'm good. Yeah, right. I'm or, different. Or I would yeah. never do that. No, of course I would. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, I think, is where the importance is. Right. Is that, in some sense, if someone else is capable of it, you are too. Okay. Right. And I'd, obviously, there's. No, for sure. Yeah. Yes. 
doesn't mean I'm not saying if if one person is capable of being a professional hockey player, everyone else is too. That's not what I'm saying. It's to recognize that we do have the capacity for great evil and great good. Right. And this all I think comes back to what Harari and Lex Friedman are talking about is to create a society and a functioning global order. Honesty and humility are core components of that. Mm-hmm. While also trying to do our best to stake in the ground some moral code that we have to adhere to. Mm-hmm. And that no human is more or less exempt from that moral code. When we exempt ourselves or when we say others are more responsible than I, we get into trouble. Yeah. Right. So we're better off. I think ultimately the message here is we're a bit better off saying, wow, we are we can be really destructive. And we recognize that we're more we're less likely to be as destructive as we're capable of. And that's probably a moral good. Yeah. And Harari goes on to say liberalism at its core is about constraining that destructive. Yes. So distributing right. power yeah. widely yeah. across different institutions to different people, having ch- checks and balances, a free press, uh, you know, robust civil society that disagrees and you know, active marketplace of ideas. All of those things are designed in some ways to limit the worst forms of human atrocities that come with, with the concentration of power. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're all capable of it. Okay. okay. Interesting. Should we listen for now? Sure. Yeah, that's where it goes. There is an, this is just part of history. There, there is an element of, of luck. But again, part of it is also self-awareness. And you asked me earlier about uh, uh, the, the, the potential of, of power to corrupt. And I listened to the interview you just did with, with Prime Minister Netanyahu a couple of days ago. And one of the things that most struck me during the interview that you asked him, you asked him, are you afraid of, of, of this thing that, that, that power corrupts? He didn't think for a single second. He didn't pose, he didn't admit a, very, a tiny little uh, uh, level of, 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 you know, a doubt. Or, no, power doesn't corrupt. It was, uh, for me, it was, it was a shocking and, and, and a revealing uh, uh, moment. And it kind of dovetails with, with how you began the interview. So, okay, so this, this, this comment he's making, I think, is consistent with the larger question we're trying to figure out, yeah. which is living in denial makes you more likely right. to engage in that thing you're denying. So Netanyahu was asked by Lex Friedman, has power corrupted you? Yeah. Netanyahu says no. Without, it, without thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Denial, I, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. At least over, I mean, it's, I mean, it maybe deep down he's thinking about it, but at least he presented himself as He's probably more likely to be corrupt. Yeah, yeah. And and we're not making political statements here, right? We're right. just acknowledging that this the lack of humility that he has there to even reflect upon it for a moment. Yeah, is not conducive to moral clarity or these conversations around what is it about me that might lead me to terrible behavior. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so the costs of denial are huge. You become arrogant. You, you are more likely to engage in the things that you think are are bad. Yeah, yeah. Or no, you you or you don't even see that. You're yeah, you continue things. to be behave in such a way that's under the guise of the delusion. Right. Yes. Therefore, you don't think you're doing anything wrong. Right. You're just kind of, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not susceptible to the flaws of human right. power. Is yeah, right. 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 right, right, interesting. Okay, right, and and yeah, wow, that's uh, that's intense. Okay, I guess we should maybe leave it there. Okay, right now. so radical acceptance of the deep flaws of the human psyche is a powerful tool to help us not only feel better but do better for ourselves and for others. Yes, yes, and, and it's not a mark of shame to no. say like, oh, wow, I right. am. Right. Because a lot of people will say, if I accept that I'm flawed or bad, okay. then, then that's wrong or something bad will happen to me. Yeah. Where other people won't love me or, ju- or they'll judge me incorrectly or something like that. So I think just to reiterate it, the acknowledgement of the flaws and our inadequacies or the acknowledgement of other people's flaws and inadequacies, it's not an excuse for allowing bad things to happen. Mm. It's just an important acknowledgement so that when we do address it, we do it with more humility and we can do it in a way that's just more effective. 
but, and maybe we can take it a step further, it actually might make those things that we acknowledge we're capable of less frequent. Right. Yes, yes, yes. We're all capable of genocide. Yes. Oh, let's actually make that, put that at the forefront of our mind. So like, we never do it. Right, right. Yeah. We're all capable of being abusive. Yeah. Okay, don't do it. It's not a good thing. We're all capable of being mean, rude, disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. And at the core of all of it is dishonesty. Yeah, a denial of who we are. Yeah, and a denial of what's happening. Yeah, okay, interesting. Okay. Well, I'm not, I'm not positive. No. Yeah, I'm not positive. No, be honest to yourself. It actually leads to good things, not bad things. Yeah. Take it easy. Thanks, Mike. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise, have a great day. Peace out. <laughs>